Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ian with Out of This World Reader. I hope you're all doing splendid, but today's video, I'm going to be jumping on the bandwagon and giving it, giving an attempt at the mid-year freakout tag. A lot of other booktubers have been putting out their videos here lately and I really wanted to do it to kind of see like a check-in of sorts of kind of how my year is going by. It is crazy that we're already in June. Yeah, June. The year has just flown by. I feel like everyone has said that in their videos as well. But for some reason, like this year has just been so quick. The past year was very slow in my opinion. It was just with everything going on. It just felt like it was dragging on, but this year, it has just been speeding by, and it's crazy that I, like, I'm getting old, and I'm scared of that. So I've got a lot of books here to cover. I've already got a giant old pile over here on my ugly couch, and I've got a lot to say about them. So let's just jump right in with question number one, and that's the best book you've read so far, and this one is tough because... This year has just been a great, just year of kind of reading in general, but I'm gonna have to give it to either Uprooted by Naomi Novik or The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This one was really the kind of introduction to adult fantasy in the past. I've only really kind of checked out YA fantasy and I took a chance on this and I absolutely love this. I've finished the whole series already in this year. That's crazy, I know, because there's some big books. And then this one, I just love this so much. Like I love folktale and everything, and I really liked Spinning Silver as well, but with this one it involved kind of wizards and magic and alchemy and all that and a dark force, so I really enjoyed that. So like I couldn't go wrong with just picking these two as my favorites of the year, but there were so many that I really enjoyed. Project Hail Mary was great. Lore by Alexander Barak and like just this year's just been great for reading. Next up is the best sequel you've read and I'm going to have to give it to Bloodsworn, which is the final book in the Ashlers duology by Scott Rankton. I just finished this a couple days ago, and I really enjoyed this. Like, the way it kind of played out in the end, it was very, like, I enjoyed just how it turned out. But in the Ashlords, the first book, it's like a mix of The Hunger Games and The Wolf by Wolf, if you've read those books. I feel like a lot of people have read The Hunger Games, but Wolf by Wolf, I don't think many people have read. But it surrounds kind of like this world where these different races are kind of come together for this one race where they raise these phoenixes at the start of them like at the, at the start of this day and then they race them until they die at the end of the night and at night they have to protect their kind of ashes from the other racers because the racers can go and kind of mess with them, I'm sorry if you hear the lawnmowers outside, but like I was saying, like they have to defend these ashes and you follow these three different perspectives, each one a different race coming from the different empire and they're all fighting for something in this race and then at the end of the race it kind of ended off with just a lot of things going on and in this one it just centered around kind of more kind of war and political intrigue, whereas in the first one it was mostly that race, and I just enjoyed my time with this. This is an underrated kind of duology, so if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. It's a, it's a, it's a good time. Next up is some new releases that you're excited for but you haven't read yet, and I've got a ton. So, the first one is going to be Half Sick of Shadows by Lauren Sebastian. This is a King Arthur retelling, a feminist retelling, I believe. And I love King Arthur and everything surrounding it. I remember growing up fantasizing about kind of the Camelot and the Arthurian legends and all that. And the cover, I love this cover. It just stands out to me. So I can't really, can't wait to dive into this one. Another one, which is steeped in gold. I've heard great things about this. This is like a Jamaican kind of mythology and kind of, I haven't experienced any Jamaican mythology. But just witches, kind of, they're arch rivals and they have to work together to stop this evil. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And I believe there's a little bit of romance between them. I'm not sure. But a lot of people have been putting this on their TBR. And I, I can't go wrong with picking it up either. And another one, another great one that I really want to pick up that I've heard a lot about is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. But I believe this is following kind of an enemies to lovers kind of trope 
where these two people, I, I honestly have no idea what's going on, but okay, so yeah, there's a soldier and then there's a turncoat, a rebel, and they have to work together to kind of save the empire, so just a, another great book to get, to get to eventually. Two that I don't have yet that I will hopefully be picking up soon is The Helm of Midnight. I kind of did that in an anticipated releases, but everything surrounding that just sounds so interesting to me. And The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I can't stop hearing enough great things about it. It's got a giant dragon on the cover. And I love dragons. And I can't... It just, it just sounds like something right up my alley. So there's another one. The next question is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I had a ton for this as well. But I, I narrowed it down to one. And it's going to be She Who Became the Sun. And it's t said to be kind of like Mulan and Song of the, a Song of Achilles mixed together. I haven't read a Song of Achilles, but I absolutely love Mulan. And I haven't really kind of read anything surrounding kind of like Chinese culture and that kind of stuff. So I'm really interested to dive into this very soon when it comes out. But that was just the only one that I could really narrow it down. The one that I'm really the most excited for. Next up is the biggest disappointment, and thankfully this year hasn't been that disappointing. But I gotta give it to One by One by Ruth Ware. I was really expecting a lot more than this, kind of this getaway, this retreat, and kind of being trapped in by the snow. It involves skiing, and I love skiing. But it just really let me down. I was, I don't know, it just was tough. I really enjoyed the turn of the key in the cabin, and the woman in cabin 10 and it was just like it was it was tough to finish this like i knew who the killer was within a, like 50 pages of the story but like i then i just i enjoyed the setting and kind of being trapped in and the only reason i really finished it is because i wanted to figure out kind of why they wanted to kind of do what they were doing but yeah, this is the biggest disappointment. Another one would be Outlawed by Anna North. I was expecting that to be kind of like a feminist version of the Magnificent Seven kind of action-packed. But in the kind of book, they would have like a little bit of action scenes. But it's definitely, it's very important. Like that book covered a lot of important topics. But I was expecting a lot more from the action scenes and the fights and that kind of stuff. Like it would go do a little battle or something like that, like a shootout. And then like, it would be in the middle of it and then it would just end. And it was like, it just left you as to like, kind of what was going on, like what, what ended up happening. But yeah, it would just jump around and kind of conclude things very quickly without explaining it. So that's another disappointment. But thankfully this year has been very disappointing. Next up is your biggest surprise and I'm gonna have to give it to either the Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Really enjoyed this historical fiction in, I believe, late 19th century London, surrounding kind of like a past kind of perspective, two perspectives, and then a present perspective around the kind of like this apothecary murderer in the past, and then the one in the present finds this vial. And then from there, they're kind of set on these paths. The present perspective is trying to kind of uncover the truth behind the apothecary murders after she finds this vial but in the past you're kind of following these two women as they're kind of trying to make it out like they're on the run and it was just really it really surprised me the perspective in the kind of in the present day i was really able to connect with her because she had a love for history and i have a love for history if you didn't know and she kind of like didn't take her chance at kind of going and following her dreams of history and i just was able to kind of connect with her a lot the other one is the year before the end by vidar hoke said it's like it was just a fast paced 200 pages of great sci-fi i really enjoyed it it's very similar to kind of andy weir style of reading or yeah writing so i did a book chat definitely went more in depth with it but if you haven't checked it out it's a hidden gem sci-fi definitely go check it out question number seven is your favorite new author debut or new to you got quite a bit for this too brandon sanderson i really enjoyed just the mistborn trilogy those are the only ones i've read so far but just based on those like i can't wait to just dive into more of his other works naomi novik i really enjoyed both uprooted and spinning silver great i think i gave them i think spinning silver got 4.5 stars and uprooted got five stars 
But I just really like her style of writing and those folktale, the way she kind of spins it. And I can't wait to pick up A Deadly Education by her. I've heard Magical School that tries to kill you. So I love a magical school setting. Another one that I just found when I just finished The Bone Maker is Sarah Beth Durst. I really enjoyed kind of the way that she wrote out this kind of bone magic and the way she kind of spun this tale. And it was a great standalone, so I can't wait to kind of dive into more of her other works. I've heard The Queens of Renthia is kind of her main kind of trilogy that everyone talks about, but just, I checked out a couple other standalones and they really sound interesting as well, so she's another great author that I can't wait to check out more from. And that last one is going to be Alexander Brack, and I read Lore back in January, and I love that so much. Greek mythology took a different spin on it and I can't wait to just dive into more of her other works. I've heard she's got quite a big quite a big backlist. So if you have any great recommendations for her, let me know please. Question number eight is your newest fictional crush and y'all gonna make me blush on camera. I'm gonna have to give it to either Melora from Lore. She's just a badass character. Just great. Go check out Lore if you haven't read it yet. And the other one is going to be Nina from the Six Crows duology. I just loved her throughout the series. Just the way she kind of like took digs at Mateus and just the humor that she kind of brought to the table, to the crew. But yeah, those two newest fictional crushes. The next question is your newest favorite character, and this is easy. I'm going to have to give it to Hagrid. I haven't experienced the Harry Potter series at all in my life. Haven't even watched the movies. But just in the Sorcerer's Stone, after meeting Hagrid, I knew. That was that was my favorite character. My newest favorite character so far this year. He's just great. I think we can all agree that Hagrid is a favorite among us all. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. Next up is a book that made you cry. And I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't fully cried yet. I've teared up. But I'm still on the search for the book to finally make me just ball. I'm looking for it still, but a couple that I kind of teared up in this so far is Crooked Kingdom. I think we can all all agree that that ending was crazy. And yeah, I was I was definitely definitely emotional there at the end. Another one that I just finished, Project Hail Mary. It was just great throughout, it had heartwarming moments sad moments that had it all and i was definitely tearing up a couple times throughout and that last one is going to be spinning silver by yeah naomi novik another one of my favorite authors i've said it before but yeah this one spinning silver was mostly because it's just the heartwarming kind of found family aspects of it it was just great to kind of see all these different characters kind of coming together despite all the kind of challenges that faced them and the challenges that they faced were unbearable to read about they were tough and it was just emotional to kind of just experience like you can you couldn't experience it in their eyes but like just through the pages you were able to kind of just get a little glimpse of what they were going through and that was you know it was sad and it was just great to see them all to come together at the end. But I'm still searching for that one to f make me fully cry. So if any great recommendations, let me know. Next up is a book that made you happy and I'm gonna have to give it to you, The Star of the Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Can't wait to read The Night Circus because I've heard, I can't, I can't remember if people love this one or The Night Circus more, but this one I was just happy because it just had like this giant library labyrinth in the center of the earth, filled with books, art, cats. It was just everything that I look for in kind of like a hidden world. And it was all whimsical. I felt like I was truly there. And I just loved the kind of different stories and myths that played out as well. In the story, the main story. But yeah, I just this really made me happy. But it just made me happy to kind of read something that I kind of imagined as a kid. And it was very similar to Piranesi, which I believe I read last year. Yeah, last year. And I enjoyed that one. And this one was just kind of the same. That hidden lab labyrinth library just really made me happy. Now it's time to get to the most beautiful books that you've received this year. And this was tough as well. I've got several here. 
first one is going to be Winter's Orbit by Evereen Maxwell. I'm planning on giving this a reread because I think I read this at the wrong time, but I just love the green. The green aspect to it, the, it was just, yeah, very pretty. The other one is The Ones Were Meant to Find by Joan He. I love this cover, I love the waves, and it's just like, I don't know. It's mesmerizing this, just everything that's going on with it, but I'll be diving into this soon. And the last one is going to be The Jasmine Throne. This one really looks interesting as well. It's with these stenciled edges with these flowers and vines. Vines, they're vines actually. And there's the colors on this and this this is a badass girl right here. Yep. Okay, we're getting to the end. This is gonna be a ton to edit. <laughs> I, I, I've been blabbing on for some time. Question number 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Like the rest of these questions, I got a lot that I still gotta read. A lot of my TBR. I just keep adding more books and more books sound keep that are interesting keep coming out. But one I really wanna dive into is the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. This is what I really want to continue on next with his works. I've heard this is a great sci-fi, and yeah, the third one is getting ready to come out, so binge the whole series, read that third one. Another one is The Girl with the Loudest Voice. I've heard this is a very kind of deep book, and it touches on some things that are very important, all while telling a great story. So this is another one I really want to read soon. And then this is a new release that I, can't, I believe came out in the end of December or January, and it is The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry. I really have no idea what's going on, but it's following some wizardry, and I believe kind of this group of women that are kind of trying to protect this one woman or kind of queen of some sorts and there's kind of like necromancy and shape-shifting involved and it kind of goes wrong and they have to save the day that's what I believe is going on but don't take my word for it because a lot of things is going on in my mind and it's just all the all over the place and the last one is going to be war and peace I've made it my summer goal to finish the whole classic after hearing so many people say that it's actually a great read in my anti TBR video and the original kind of historical fiction I think I need to pick it up, so it is another one that I really want to finish before the end of the year, but just in general, I think I'm going to plan it out for the whole summer. And the last question is, your favorite book community members that you've met through your journey, and I'm going to have to give it to everyone that I've encountered in my journey. I've just, I like, I've made a lot of friends here on BookTube, and it's just great to see kind of like us all kind of come together for this one love and just spread different kind of recommendations to everyone and I just love everything about it so I'm gonna I'm giving it to everyone but that was all and this is this is gonna be a long video I hope you enjoyed it please let me know your thoughts on any of these books that I've kind of picked out oh, I hope you give this a try it's just kind of like a check-in for the year and figure out what what the rest year is gonna what, what the rest of the year is gonna look out but I hope you all have a splendid day, and I'm going to leave you with a message from Ellie, who said that, what did she say? Adventure is out there. So I'll catch you next time. Bye.